Joining me now to discuss is National Field Director for Black Voters Matter Fund, Wanda Mosley. Wanda, what do you make of these vast disparities in the way that these white people, Republicans, who voted illegally were treated, and these black people who basically were making a mistake? They weren't trying to vote twice. They were just try they were exercising what they thought was still their right to vote. It just happened to be that it wasn't their right to vote. Yes. So what do I make of this? We can sum it up in one world, Charles. Racism. This is racist. Um, this is America. Locking up black bodies has been um, the norm in this country uh, since forever, basically. Uh, so this is what we're seeing. We saw insurrectionists who scaled the wall of the Capitol on January 6th get slaps on the wrist, maybe six months. And like you mentioned, Pam Moses, I mean, look, look at what they're doing to, to not just anybody, black women who are activists, black women who are outspoken. And like you said, black women who simply made mistakes. In the case of Crystal Mason, she used a provisional ballot. That's what provisional ballots are for. If there is some type of issue with the person who is going to cast a vote. So she technically didn't even vote. She cast a provisional ballot. And look at the sentence that is looming over her. What does this say about the whole system, the architecture that prevents people who have been convicted of crimes from voting? Because in each one of these particular cases that we just enumerated, that was the case. Yeah. So there, there's also another case that you didn't mention, uh, Courtney Rainey in Mississippi, uh, another uh, a black woman uh, who was charged with voter fraud. Uh, and then charged with voter intimidation. Um, and so if you look at that case, you look at Crystal Mason's case, you look at uh, Pam Moses, there's a common thread through all of these cases. Uh, judges who have harshly come down on these black women um, for, in the case of, the, of Pam Moses being an activist, and in the case of Courtney Rainey being a black woman who had risen to power. Um, so we see, again, these instances where there's intimidation, but there are also uh, another thing in play with trying to put black women in their place. Uh, so, again, this all goes back to the bias that is in the criminal injustice system in these United States of America. You mentioned the judges. We should also mention the prosecutors. The prosecutor in the Moses case is releasing a press release that sort of touts the case as a voter fraud case that it will presumably be used by Republicans to, to defend their voter suppression laws. So they're, they're not backing away from being harsh on these black women, primarily black women, but not only black women, black people. They're actually using them as the example, holding them up as the banner to say, this is what we need to do. This is why elections are problematic. This is why there's fraud in election, even though we know that the last election we had was the safest we've ever had. Safest ever in history. And might I also add that we know that the strongest, most uh, consistent, most loyal voting bloc for the Democratic Party, black women. So yes, there is a connection here. And you know, in the case of, of, of Courtney Rainey, again, I keep going back to her situation, you know, her case was actually overturned, but then you saw the attorney general in Mississippi say that he wanted her to serve out the rest of the sentence. Um, this is unheard of. Uh, from what I understand, rarely do a court of appeals change their decision. Um, so again, we, we see this situation. It is consistent all across these United States, especially in so-called red states, where the legal system held up by judges is seeking to punish black people for, as you said, making a mistake. When we talk about Pam Moses' case, she, her application was signed off by probation as well as elected officials, election officials. So again, nothing uh, e e egregious, uh, no actual crime committed, no violent crime committed, and yet they're wanting to lock black people up for years. Welcome to America. You point, you point out that the Rainey case was overturned, the conviction in that case was overturned. Do you have hope that the other cases and those incredibly long sentences will also be thrown out? If there is any justice, then yes, they will be thrown out. I absolutely am holding out hope that that is the case.
Do you know of any help that these women are getting in fighting these cases from groups like yours, maybe, or from from you know uh, from other civil rights groups with deep pockets that can help them to fight these cases? So the best thing for uh, these types of cases is amplifying uh, the injustice and the wrongdoing. Uh, the activist community does a really good job of that. I've seen some. Uh, change.org petitions out there, again, to amplify these situations and to shine light on the injustices that have been heaped on these on these women. Um, but again, you know, the way that the system is set up, these judges uh, can basically run roughshod. Um, so it, there's not a lot, unfortunately, we, we can do, but we will continue to fight. We won't lay down. We won't take this. We will continue to fight to create change. Yeah, I, it, it looks like, you know, these women are being made into fall guys or fall women uh, for an issue that really doesn't exist. And they're being used as an example to be treated harshly as an intimidation tactic to prevent or raise the question in other people's minds as to whether or not they will be prosecuted if they exercise their right to vote. This is wrong. This is something that, that everyone should be upset about and in arms about. Wanda Mosley, thank you very much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate your time coming up.